Marvelous comes to a world of magic as science and the arcane combine to make marvels. Meet steampunk inventors and orc mystics at the Volsun Hub on beastsofwar.com. The new Flames of War 4th Edition brings you the battles of World War II in epic 15mm scale. Go to beastsofwar.com to get the latest in news, tactics and tutorials. Hey guys, Dallas from Privateer Press, and today we're going to be painting on our Eye of Truth. Now, this big old protector warjack is pretty awesome in my opinion, and we're going to paint the golds on him, right? And a lot of people will struggle with like how to deal with golds, like and, and which way to approach it. And I find the fastest and easiest route to getting my golds on is through a dry brush. So let's get cracking. So for this, I'm going to start out with some cold steel. Okay, it's just a bright shiny silver from our Formula P3 line. And I'm just going to take a pretty good sized dry brush here and grab some of this out. Let me show it to you over here. I'm going to remove most of the paint. Okay, I just want just enough paint on here to, to just kind of shade the model or just kind of tint the model. And what I'm going to do is dry brush the entire model. Now, now when I say the entire model, normally I would, when painting, a, I would dry brush the entire model. But today we're just going to focus up here to show the technique. So I'm just dry brushing it, which just means using a dry brush and just flicking it across the surface to put some of that paint on those upper uh, upper areas. I want to go one direction. One direction kind of lets the, uh, going against the grain, you can see here the, the filigree. You want to go against that to kind of um, let it pick out and not trying to get it too deep down in there. Okay, I can put some on his head too. And just working that cold steel all over. Doesn't matter if it gets on this plate here. I'm going to paint this, uh, the primary armor plate. Doesn't really matter. I'm just going to paint that later anyway. So, and this dry brush is super thin. Not a lot of texture is going to be lost. You can even grab paint. If you need some right off the, right off your paper towel. See how very little there is there. It's good. I'll just add more. Just making sure we got a good layer of silver. Turn it around here. And traditionally, a lot of people, uh, you're taught to put a layer of brown for your golds to set on. And uh, what I find happens is you have your brown, you have a nice solid brown, and your gold uh, goes over top, and you can see the brown through it, which kind of dulls the gold out. So what I've what I'm doing is by putting silver down and gold on top, if there's anything shining through, it's actually metal, right? So it's actually just brighter and just adds more of uh, that metallosity to the overall model. There's our silver. Now we can move on to our gold. And for this, I'll be using Rulet Gold. I'm going to use the same dry brush. I'm not even going to clean it. I'm just going to wipe away just to have the very minimal amount coming off the brush. Go back, go into for some really gold. Once again, I'm just going to remove most of the excess paint. Something like that. We're just going to flick this right over the silver. Like so. You can see that's already turning a nice gold color, but we're going to kick that up as we progress. Once we start shading and highlighting this, that gold's really going to come alive. But we've got to build a foundation first. Take your time with a dry brush. It doesn't have to be heavy. You don't have to, you don't have to beat the devil out of it. You just want to get it on there. Take your time. A little bit more.
Let me get the head there. Sorry, it's a little hard to see. This is looking pretty good. I like to, when I, when I paint the protector jacks, I like to imagine like this very antique, very old ancient golds on them. So we can kind of get that effect. Very quickly, we got a solid layer gold. If you see any spots you want to tidy up or add some gold to, go ahead and do that. Like this uh, band, once again. I'm going to use just the tip of my brush here and just kind of work some full gold onto it. Want that band nice and gold. Still just flicking it across. Just to get an amount of gold I want on there. This guy has one of my favorite heads in the entire line. Got that cool knightly helm. Okay, rinse our brush. Now we can move on to shading. For this, we're going to be mixing brown ink, yellow ink, and a bit of that really gold to work into the shadows of the gold. I'm going to give these a good shake. Pigment tends to collect in the bottom. I'm making a little bit extra here. I want to make sure I have enough to do the whole, the whole area. Let's do three brown and see how that looks. We can change it if we need. And I'm going to grab a really gold. You can see that makes a nice semi metallic color for our model. We have something like bootstrap leather. Um, you can paint like a leather pouch or something and with your bootstrap leather and then by adding brown ink to it and uh, you can glaze it and you change the tone of it. So you can have like actually like a belt and a strap or a belt and a pouch, both paint and bootstrap leather, mix a little brown ink into the bootstrap leather, paint just the belt or the pouch and it separates them out a little bit. Gives it more definition, adds contrast to your model. I'm going to do a very controlled wash, so I'm going to have a lot of um, say of where this wash goes. I'm going, to, I'm going to apply it, but then I'll use my second brush to kind of whisk, whisk it away or pull it away from anywhere I didn't want it to collect. Okay. We're just going to work that in. quite thin but I don't want it up on this upper surface I want to make sure I fill in the filigree pretty good
And I gotta start thinking about which direction my light's coming from. I really like these upper plates to have a very central light, but I know I'm gonna have to paint this plate here in a little bit. <clears throat> now I wanna go light to dark or dark to light. Which one am I gonna do? I'm gonna do it on the opposite side. So I gotta think about that light now. So I think I'm gonna do light or dark to light, which means this side has to be dark. So the light's gonna be coming from this side. So I can shadow this, this side even more. All right, so while we're waiting for our wash to dry on our Eye of Truth, I went ahead and mixed up the next shade. And it's just a mix of Umbral Umber, Sanguine Base, and a drop of brown ink. So we're just gonna apply this into the deepest parts of our golds. I'm just gonna blend this up. Starting at the deepest area. Just blending it over. These are all areas where the two elements meet, the filigree element and the banded metal element. I want to, I want to put a shadow in between that. That's dark lining. And that just separates the two surfaces and lets them read better. Now, since we're going from dark to light, I'm establishing that light's coming from kind of over here. I want to put some dark up here and that gives it more contrast. There we go. Draw a little line. Around that rivet. And a line. There we go, second shade on. So we've established our base coat with the cold steel and the roulette gold, and then we did two layers of shading. Now we can move on to highlighting. For that, I'll be using solid gold. I could, if you wanted to, tone this down a bit with a bit of that roulette gold. But I'm going for something, I'm going for a more extreme highlight here. For this, I'm going to use a small dry brush. Just barely dry brush over top. Give a general sense of highlighting on my metal. This is just bringing back some of that shine on the filigree.
Now I can move on to my regular brushwork. And this will be used to pick up that armored band with the rivets and some of the more fiddly bits. And I can blend that out. You can just use the edge of your brush to catch those tiny bands. Pick out those rivets. When I first saw this model, I thought all these little rivets were gems, and I was, got a little paranoid about painting them. There we go. I like adding extra highlight to the face of my models. Draws attention to it. It's kind of naturally where we look at on people. You notice when you're talking to somebody, we naturally look into each other's eyes. So you can uh, kind of pull some tricks on your miniatures by concentrating on the eyes, the shoulders the nose and the brow kind of make people people's gaze linger onto that area of the model you can uh, for your tabletop stuff you can get away with maybe not putting as much time in on the feet during highlighting if any paint gets down in your filigree here you can go back with your dark shade And just tap it in there to bring back that filigree shape. The goal, of course, is to not have to do that, but sometimes you got to go back and fix mistakes. It's okay. It's all part of the process. All right. Normally, after completing the entire model, base, grass, ballast, and everything, I would dull coat it to, to tone down my metals. And then I would hide it one final time after dull coating. I'm going to go ahead and show that step right now without dull coating. So what I would do is mix some radiant platinum in with my solid gold. I got plenty of solid gold out here. Go ahead and grab radiant platinum. Touch the solid gold. And make a warm silver. A very white gold. Something similar to that. It's pretty good. Now remember, this would be after the entire model is completed and dull coated. What I would use this for is on the very, very edges and tips of things, such as here, here, here. I'm going to just add a little bit of this to increase that overall metallosity. Just to make it look super shiny. Give it those glinting lights on the metals. Doesn't take much.
There we go. Some glinting lights on our metal, on our golds. Our warjack now has some gold on it. And remember, this can be completed over the whole entire model before moving on to those plates. It really speeds up the process. It's much easier to do this now than try to go back and paint the filigree much later or the trim much later. This is Dallas from Privateer Press. I hope you enjoyed the video and happy painting. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastsofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.